Well, folks, welcome back. Weird video today, but I figured it might be worth putting on the record here to see what, what comes of this little experiment. So a while back, I talked about Turbo Dork Paints. I, I used one basically as an experiment with something, a project that will be way down the line. I loved one of them, didn't love the other one, and I basically said I was having trouble using them and I probably won't use them again. And as most things in, in the modeling community, uh, it turns out it was operator error. I just needed to learn how to use Turbo Dork Paints. And I love them now. They have um, some specific colors that you're not gonna find anywhere else. They also do, there, there are a lot of overlap, um, colors that are very similar to Green Stuff World or Vallejo with their color shift paints. But you know, once you actually spend the time, do a little research, you do some practice, you figure out how to properly thin and mix Turbo Dork paints for the airbrush, they're gorgeous. However, there is one Turbo Dork paint, and I should say I have not, obviously, you look at my spoons here, you see the ones I have used, um, and you know what, in the video description, I'll, I'll put what all these are from left to right, in case you're wondering, but can you even see the ice to never over here hanging out in the corner? Love this guy. But you, you know, the, I have not used the full line, because there's just so many, and, and there's the uh, zenithal effects and everything, but there is one color that I am dying to use that has just been the most stubborn Turbo Dork paint I have used. This is my third bottle, not exaggerating. I can, it is, I don't know if it's more pigment heavy than the rest. I'm gonna shake this right next to the microphone. And every bottle I've gotten has been like this. It is just a giant clump of the most tightly packed pigment, and it is seafood. Um, the first one I got, I shook it, I shook it, I worked with it. Amazon has some really great return policies, and this was a third-party vendor on Amazon, and they allowed me to return it and replace it with a new one. So I did. I got it, same thing, just solid block of pigment in there. So this time, what I decided to do and by the way, if you're wondering what's going on here, so I have a series of of egg planes. Um, not all Hasegawa brand egg planes, and unfortunately with this camera, the way it is, you're not gonna see the color shifting going on with these, but they're they're pretty cool looking. Um, I have them all painted with various um, you know, color shifts or metallics. In this case, I'm pretty sure this is just absinthe. Um, I, they're for a project, they're for a thing I have going on. Um, and this is, mother load over black rather than white. Um, love the color you get. Whatever, the point, I, I just put them over here to look nice. Um, the second time, what I did was I actually opened up the bottle, took the, you know, the dropper top out, and painstakingly scooped out all of the pigment, all of it, into a little medicine cup. Just one of these guys right here. And I, I thinned it down, I mushed it, I smushed it, I stirred it. I mean, I worked with it harder than I've ever worked with any paint before. And just to give you an example, this is what I use to, to mix in the little cups, okay? Could not get it thinned and, and, and everything ready for the airbrush. I couldn't, it just wouldn't do it. So I went to Amazon, told them again, it's, I've tried, I've done my best, it's not working. I figured, okay, one, one bottle of paint is a fluke, two is bad luck can I get, try another one? And they were good enough to replace it with a third. The third, same thing. And I was, I, was, I was sure that the third one would work. And if you look here, you can see how thick the pigment is. It's just stuck to the bottom. You shake it, you shake it, you shake it. It, it doesn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't. So you know what? I've been wanting to do this for a while anyway. I've wanted a Vortex paint mixer and I guess this was my excuse to spend the money. Now, I've seen these for various prices. I just got this out of the box. I mean, literally just got it out of the box. I left the box downstairs. You can see the little silica do not eat is still there. This one was, was not cheap. Um, and I found out that buying these in general is not cheap. But this one had nothing but five-star ratings on Amazon. So I went ahead and got this one. And we're gonna find out if, finally, the seafood has met its match. By the way, here's my cup of all my other spoons from Green Stuff World and Vallejo and all the different shifting paints they have. I keep them all just because, I mean, if you've painted with them, you know that the what's reflected on the bottle when you look at it, 
Um, it's great that these guys give this, but even sometimes this little panel doesn't give you the full representation like it does when you actually put it on something and then can hold it in the light and watch the, the shift, so. On the other end of the transformer is a micro USB cable. I've already figured out that you can't just hook any micro USB cable like with a box or something. You've got to have the associated transformer. It's got an on off switch. And now, um, I think we can just leave these here. And it's just activated by pressing on this silicone cap. So let's start with a bottle that I know is good. I know I've used recently. We'll use ammo of MIG Silver and that's not too loud. It does feel weird on your finger. And that weird sound, I have these, these um, labels, the names tend to come off as you use them, they rub off. So I have my ammo of MIG bottles wrapped with packing tape. I think that's what that sound is that you hear. Yeah, now these never had a problem with being shook or anything like that, so. I just wanted to try one out. Let's see what happens with the seafood if this helps. And if it does help, how long is it gonna take? I don't know. I don't know how long I should let it go for. You can already hear some improvement there. Let's turn it over, give it some chance on the bottom. Oh, it is, I've never used a Vortex before. It, it vibrates everything. I guess it really wants to have something in that little nib there. I can see I can see a difference. I can definitely see a difference, although we're starting to get those dark specks coming back up. Um, you can kind of see around the edges there on the top. But you know what? I'm hopeful. We're going to keep going. If I can make this paint usable, I'll be just really happy. I feel stuff moving around like it never has before in the bottle of seafood. So let's grab a cup. Let's just put a drop in. And can you see the nozzle is just full of that pigment too. Will we, oh, we get a squeeze. Mm. And yeah, we're just kind of blocked up. Oh my God, this is, well, this is farther than I've got. It stopped at that point and we've got pigment back in the nozzle. Nah, you can, um, shoot. You can, you can see at this point, once, once what little, you know, carrier fluid is in there, you're just left with the big old block of pigment again. Sorry, that was a terrible shot, but let me you can see how the pigment is still chunked up in there. And in the bottle, you can feel it's just a big, chunky, dried block of stuff. I was hoping I was really hoping, but you know, it's not over yet because let's let's keep going. But this is exactly the experience I've had with my other bottles of seafood. And we're gonna we're gonna pour all this back in. But I'm like, it's so thick, it holds the bottle up by this 
toothpick being stuck in it. And I honestly don't know what specifically to do. Of course, this, like I said, this being my third bottle of this one particular color, um, I, I just, I don't know. Now, also, you know, giving it the benefit of the doubt, this could be just one batch that has been sitting on a shelf for way too long. That could be a thing too. Maybe this one distributor has a very bad batch and the bad batch is a great Clone Wars show that you could watch if you're into Star Wars. Certainly don't want to lose pigment from the final product. I want it to have all of its you know, color properties and everything. I guess we'll give it a little bit more time on the vortex here. And hopefully, maybe creating some air pockets in there, um, maybe that will help it, help it mix better, I don't know. Just again, let's just take a look at the Vortex Mixer. So this is satin black that's been sitting on its side for a while. And you can hear the mixing ball in there floating around. Yeah, so the mixer works. We know that the mixer works. It's this one particular very stubborn bottle of seafood. Um, the third in a family line of seafood that just does not want to cooperate. I'm not sure how long at a clip you can use this motor, you know, it obviously must need some time to cool down and rest. But is that enough time to really let this particular paint mix? I don't know. We have a nozzle full of pigment again. I'm gonna drop another mixing ball in. And that's that's what we're dealing with right there. Get get down in there. Get down in there. Um is that gonna help? I don't know. I really don't know. Could absolutely hear that mixing ball moving around that time. And I can still hear it moving around. Sounds a little bit more mixed, but I feel like that ball is just moving around past past the giant clump of pigment. So let's find out. Let's see where we're at. Still looks like we have a giant clump of pigment stuck in the nozzle again, but you know what? We've been there, done that, so okay. Clump of pigment is a lot smaller this time, so that's not too bad. actually softer too all right but we still have this giant can support the weight of the bottle by sticking a toothpick in it clump of giant clump of pigment in the middle of the bottle so I'm not sure how much it's gonna take for this to, to break up I feel like I need an ultrasonic gun or something. I don't know, does that exist? You guys tell me. Um, maybe I need to throw this in a rock tumbler and let it just go that way. Because it's getting very frothy in there. I don't know if that's the way to go, but um, I, I see such small improvements, but my question is, should anybody have to do this with a brand new bottle of paint? 
of any kind at all. I mean, is this is this going way beyond what anybody should even put up with to be able to use a brand new bottle of paint of any brand of any type, you know? What do you guys think? Is this just kind of ridiculous? I put another ball in there though and it went right down. Didn't float on the surface. So I guess we're getting somewhere. If you take a look at that bottle, you can see the big thick plug of pigment is still there. No matter how we roll it. So we know it's not air bubbles or anything like that. Because no matter how we roll it, that big thick bunch of pigment is still there. Um, it's just a shame because I really wanted to use this. And after spending the time... After spending the time to get to learn to really know how to use Turbo Dork, I really enjoy, I really enjoy what they can bring to projects. Um, and I'm just, it's a shame. I really wanted to try this color seafood. So um, I think could, could this work? Eventually, if you have enough time and patience and you're willing to, I think so probably now if I were to open the bottle up and I were to dig out all the pigment, put it back in the little cup and kind of, you know, mess with it and poke it and cut it and mush it and get it back in. I think if I did that once or twice and then put it on the vortex and, and you know, and I was, if I had a whole day to mess with it, I think it probably could. I think this vortex mixer would be the key to getting this to work. I don't have that kind of time though. When I buy a bottle of paint, you know, I, I expect it in a minimal, minimal amount of time to be usable. And that's kind of what, that's why I shelled out $107 for this guy right here was so that to save me some time, not to be part of a brand new all day event to make a, a $9 bottle of paint usable. Um, I'm still gonna keep it obviously, cause this is going to, um, I mean, this guy that was sitting on its side, 10 seconds on here versus, you know, shaking uh, older paints, thicker paints. I'm gonna try it on uh, the Panzer Aces. This is a very thick paint. And that's a lot looser than it than it was sitting in there. Um, especially, I haven't put a mixing ball or anything there. Put a mixing ball in there. I bet this will be, this will be awesome. Um, so I'm not upset with the purchase. I just really wanted to see if this, if this could help me straighten out my most difficult, my most pain in the ass, frankly, bottle of paint I have here in my stash, and I can't squeeze it because the nozzle is still plugged up with. See, it's kind of just seeping up around there. Like when I, it's. It wants to come, it's just plugged up with, once again, with that, um, I can't think of the word now, with that pigment. It's just not, it's just not working, so. I don't know, I thought it was a fun try. I thought it was a, a cool thing to attempt. Maybe we could get it worked out and it would have been nice to do it here on camera with some folks watching. Anyway, all right, so thanks for joining me on this little fun adventure. I don't know, if you have uh, theories um, on how long it would take, or you think uh, that ultimately it's a waste of time, or you think that ultimately it's gonna be successful, put it in the comments. Let's talk about what you think of this. But um, Or if you're surprised or not surprised at all at the way this turned out, or if I'm just an idiot and I was using the whole thing wrong and you can uh, tell the world how I should have done it better, please do put it in the comments, but here we go. So for everybody building your own and painting and weathering and all that stuff. Keep building them, build them well. I'll be back again with another fun project real soon.